I want to take this time to congratulate all the previous change makers and all the present awardees for doing the extraordinary work that we continue to do each and every day. We don't do this work because of the accolades. We do this work because it needs to be done. I remember receiving the award for the work that I have been doing for food justice, social justice, and food sovereignty. And each and every day we go out there trying to make the world a better place. So hats off to you, congratulations, and continue to do your work because you know our work is needed. Congratulations. Hey everyone, this is Danny Nierenberg from Food Tank. I want to congratulate the 2023 class of the Hunter Food Policy Center 40 Under 40 Award. What an amazing accomplishment. You are such a cool and amazing group of people working to transform how we produce and consume food. I'm so excited about what you're doing right now and I'm really excited about what you'll do in the future. Congratulations to all of you. Congratulations 40 Under 40. You're all doing such great work and I'm so proud of you change the world for the better of course and i'm sorry i can't be with you today hello family and the 2023 class of 40 under 40. you are our bright lights dream makers trailblazers and world changers congratulations your efforts remind us diversity is a fact equity is a choice inclusion is an action and belonging is an outcome your recognition today teaches all generations not to follow a path, but to leave game-changing trails. Ever mindful, the degree to which we resist any injustice is the degree to which we are all free. I'm so honored to celebrate you. Because of your work, we are reminded that hope doesn't abandon us, we abandon it. And today we celebrate your hope. You are the folks we are waiting for. And from our respective humble corners of the globe, we can change the world. Thank you, can't stop, won't stop. Come visit the Bronx, si se puede. Who shows us it's not your DNA, it's your dinners. Now where you're born, where you're born, it's your breakfast, it's not your lineage, it's your lunch. The reality is what you eat turns on the genes that will decide if you're going to have a chronic disease or not. Lifestyle changes in, is important and far too often, particularly in economically challenging communities, we treat symptoms and we don't have health care, we have sick care and we're not looking to make people healthy and you see it disproportionately in communities of color across this entire country. So when we uh, have an overconsumption of meat, uh, and not plant-based. We're not feeding ourselves. We're destroying our planet. Uh, we're really hurting the economics on the long term. When we start to have a sense of purpose of ensuring that we have healthy meals, it's going to not only help our mother, but it's going to help Mother Earth. Welcome friends, and thanks for joining us this evening. My name's Annette Nielsen, and I'm the new executive director of the Hunter College New York City Food Policy Center. I follow in the steps of Charles Platkin. Charles is someone who cares deeply about food policy and also about the Hunter College Food Policy Center, bringing his expertise and enthusiasm to this space over a number of years. Tonight, we're here to celebrate the class of 2023 40 under 40 rising stars. This is our very first event that we've had since the award ceremony in 2019. Before we tip our collective hats to the 2023 cohort, we're going to celebrate a couple of singular awards for change maker and media. Charles, I'd like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you, Karen. about these glasses on that everybody wants now. Everybody wants these glasses. Thank you so much, Annette. That was incredible for all those kind words. I'm truly honored that you are here to take over as the executive director of the center. I know now that the center's important research and community work will flourish and grow exponentially. Annette, we appreciate you and thank you for all you do. You are a true food policy hero. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Hunter College in East Harlem. 
My name is Charles Plackett. I'm the former director of the Food Policy Center, but I'm still a professor here at Hunter College until the end of the summer. And uh, I want to congratulate all the Hunter College New York City Food Policy Center's 40 Under 40 award winners for the class of 2023. I'd also like to congratulate our changemaker and Food Policy Media Award winners. Uh, tonight's heroes includes policymakers, educators, community advocates, farmers, and innovators, all making significant strides to create healthier, more sustainable food environments, and who use food to promote community and economic development. The 40 Under 40 roster, as well as our two award recipients, reflects the center's broad perspective around food policy, specifically that food policies are not simply regulations imposed by governmental bodies. We believe that food policy impacts millions of New Yorkers every day at home, at work, and in our community, and that food is a basic human right. I want to thank all the honorees. That's right. At I want to thank all the honorees and their incredibly supportive guests, as well as the city council for the continued support over the last several years. To introduce our Changemaker Award, I'd like to call up to the podium someone who is a fierce advocate for strong food policy here in New York City and has been a tremendous supporter of the Hunter College New York City Food Policy Center. Jennifer Rabb is serving her 22nd year as president of Hunter College, the largest college in the City University of New York with more than 24,000 students, five schools, and an operating annual budget of more than $250 million. I would like to give a special thanks to you, President Rab, because we wouldn't be here today as the Food Policy Center if it wasn't for you. You're a true friend who's consistent and continuous support of food policy, and the center is both incredible and inspirational. So first, let's give it up for Charles Platkin, who is this? It's been very excellent because, Mayor, this is my economy drive. He keeps retiring and then coming back. So it's uh, he's one of the great citizens. So welcome to Hunter College, where in 150 years, we continue to make the American dream come true. Um, and Mayor Adams, it is such an honor to have you with us tonight. We had a dream when we moved the social work school from the east side of Manhattan up to East Harlem to engage with the community to live our mission in this neighborhood, to serve and to bring our research and our scholarship and our students and our practitioners to make this neighborhood a healthier, more secure and better educated neighborhood. And with the food policy, we do that center, we do that for this neighborhood and we do it for New York City. And it is such an honor to have the mayor with us tonight. He truly is the change maker. And he's not just a change maker in so many ways in the city and in so many ways in food policy, but Mayor Adams, this really, this whole food policy center that has had so, many, so much impact on the young, on our scholars here who will continue to live the Hunter mission um, in so many ways, because you were an early supporter. You came to this stage with your four other borough presidents, and you talked about how at a local level, policy, politics had to reflect the importance of nutrition and healthy living. And that for me personally ignited my passion to launch a food center where we could engage with scholarship, we could make scholarship real, we can have an impact, we can engage with the heroes in this audience today who live it every day and make a difference in our communities. And whether it's inviting school children here to eat healthy apples or studying nutrition or creating more nutritionists and more dietitians that we just graduated last week, we are doing our part, but you were there inspiring us as a borough president and now as our mayor. We truly through the food policy center live our hunter motto of Mihi Kura Fitori. And so through COVID, we have made a difference. We have collaborated with your city agencies. We have made a impact on policy and we continue to want to support all of you in the audience today. We are all so lucky to have a strong ally and a mayor who is so dedicated to this work. Someone who walks the walk, talks the talk. You live this idea of healthy living. You set this personal example for all of us. And with all the other things that you have, quote, on your plate, um, with what you're doing for us, the issues of public safety, of education, and as a school of education, we thank you so much for all the work you've done in dyslexia, in reading, 
you still find time for this passion that is so real to you for healthy living. And with your example, we will have a healthier community. We will have healthy children. You embody the hunter motto of mihi kora fatori, the care of the future is mine. You set an example, you will make this city a healthier place. And for that, we are so honored to present this Change Maker Award to you, Mayor Adams. No, no, I'm I'm going to uh, keep saying this over and over again until people really realize it to the fullest. Uh, people tell me, all of the mayors across the country, uh, they tell me the same thing, that uh, being the mayor of the city of New York is the second hardest job in politics in the country. And I say, when does the hard part start? Uh, I, I don't feel anything challenging about this role. Uh, hard is raising six children without knowing where the next field meal is coming from. Hard is picking cotton from sun up to sun down and giving birth in the fields just to go back to pick it again. Hard is coming to America after going through the jungle for months just to come here and watch people sit, send you um, to different cities, try to navigate that. You know, I know what hard is, and this is not hard. This is about commitment and dedication and living in the moment, I am clearly going to be the broccoli mayor. You're going to hate me now, but you're going to love me later. This is uh, tough choices, hard choices, but compassionate, caring, dedicated, and committed. And nothing is more profound about this administration that I believe, Kate, is going to be our legacy. People think public safety is going to be my love legacy. That's the prerequisite to our prosperity, but no, it's going to be health. We are going to change the game on health like no other administration. And we are leading, we're leading the country. Uh, my long-term staffer, Rachel Atchison, who was here with me for the Borough President of Borough President's Days. I've been here talking about this conversation for so long that I need to just take an apartment inside this place because I'm here. <laughs> But we are doing things that people thought were unimaginable. Plant powered of Fridays, meatless Mondays. Our young people are now starting to talk about plant based food as a default in hospital. People thought it could not be done. Lifestyle medicine, we rolled out the first version in Bellevue Hospital. Now we have lifestyle medicine in every health and hospital uh, in, in the city using our buying power to make sure we start buying healthy food. Nothing is more of a betrayal than individuals who need to be fed by government and then government give them food that feeds their healthcare crisis. Lost my mom a, year, a little over a year and a half ago. Mommy had high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, uh, struggle with gout, uh, heart disease, all of those foods that were being fed to her throughout her days contributed to her early demise and eventually transition from the physical to the spiritual. But our presence here is the strength that I have to say we have to get this right. And so, yes, uh, I am not 40, under 40. But I do know this, there's something inspirational that there are those under 40 that see what this mission is about. This journey is so rewarding it is unbelievable what we can do with the power of food. You remember Rachel on the campaign trail when I was at a debate and I talked about the connectivity between food and mental health issues. I was demonized by people. They say this guy is not fit to be mayor that he's going to try to say bad food can impact on our mental health. What is science saying now? If our hearts and kidneys and other organs are in our bodies, duh, our brain is in our body. So if bad food can hurt your arteries that clogs your heart, it can clog the same arteries in your brain. 
we are breaking down barriers and making it comfortable to talk about the power of food and make it transition in our city. And it's going to cascade throughout the entire country. Doctors are going to start getting these lessons in medical school. We're going to go from pain management to how do we prevent the diseases that create pain in the first place. You can't have a sick care system. You have to have a health care system that is going to be wellness. And I'm ready for this challenge every day. I'm excited every day I wake up understanding the power of what we're going to do in this administration. We are going to be an administration of a legacy of making sure that health is part of the environment in the city. Thank you for this, Apple. Let's continue to move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mayor Adams. Thank you, Jennifer Rabb, President Rabb, and thanks for all you do. And thank you, everyone. And Annette, back to you. So I'm really grateful to be in this space. Here at the Hunter College New York City Food Policy Center, we're honored to be a part of the landscape where we provide testimonies to city council, serve as a resource for researchers, journalists, media professionals, as well as students in various disciplines all around the world. We put out a newsletter each week with original content. Thank you, Leah. Um, spotlighting people and places engaged in important work in this space and provide a comprehensive aggregation of up-to-date food policy news found locally and globally. We also study and report on topics around food, food policy, health and nutrition, and offer forums and panels for discussing timely and relevant, innovative and evidence-based solutions to help make our city and beyond a better place. If you don't already, please subscribe to our weekly newsletter at nycfoodpolicy.org and keep an eye out. We'll be announcing our summer panels soon. So it's fitting that we at Hunter College, um, New York City Food Policy Center have a media award as part of this celebration. So I'm honored to introduce Jerusha Klumper. Jerusha is the director of foodprint.org, a website dedicated to helping people understand the full impact of their food on animals, planet, and people. For Foodprint, she hosts and produced the award-winning podcast, What You're Eating. Prior to leading Foodprint, Jerusha was the co-founder and the communications director for Food Corps and an organization that works with local communities around the country to serve healthy food in schools. And prior to that, she also led campaigns at Slow Food USA. She's got a 15 year career working for places with food in the title, working to support a food system that's better for the planet, more just, more humane, and more delicious. Listen to her podcast to learn about topics like how to avoid big box stores and unwrapping foods plastic problem, or even how to decipher egg labels. And read her important work, like her deep dive reports into food prints of the different parts of our food system, based in research and data or facts. You'll feel much smarter if you do. Jerusha grew up in New York City, and when asked to describe our food system, uses a very colorful Yiddish word. Her favorite meal, a home-cooked meal made by someone else with love. Let's hear it for Jerusha Klemper, our 2023 Media Award winner. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Such an honor to be here. Um, I just wanted to say that I don't think of myself as a media person. I think of myself as um, sort of a member of the Good Food Movement who's worked on advocacy, um, done nonprofit communications, um, but also been a voracious reader of food media and maybe like some of you uh, kind of sometimes or constant critic, um, you know, hoping that the story behind food would make its way into 
articles and stories a little more often. Um, you know, we get excited when we see that little mention in an article or maybe one article, maybe a whole issue if we're lucky. Um, and so my current work is really around bringing all of those stories behind food of the people who grow our food, who pick our food, um, of the animals who give up their lives to be the food on people's plate, of all of the environmental impacts of food. Um, you know, my hope is that that can go from being a kind of niche concern to a mainstream part of the way we talk about food. And so if you haven't checked out the site or listened to the podcast, it's sort of for you, but I would think of it more as for maybe your mom and dad, your cousins, your friends and neighbors who really don't totally understand what it is that you do um, for your job and maybe don't totally get why you care so much about these issues. Um, we really design it to be um, inclusive and welcoming for people who don't totally get these subjects. So maybe use it as your tool to help them explain how you got to be this dynamic, powerful, under 40, way to go being under 40 uh, person, really making such a difference in our food system as you all are. Thanks so much. So we have a special guest this evening, Stephen Ritz, founder of The Green Bronx Machine, a great friend of the Hunter College New York City Food Policy Center, and a former changemaker honoree. Stephen, could you join me on stage? Working great. I hit it. Got you. Okay. Amidst the smoke, pain, confusion, and anger of the moment, it's fitting that we gather here today and that we do so joyfully. It speaks to the urgency of the work we do and commitment we all have to equity, education, justice, and to policy. Service is the price we pay for the privilege of being on the planet. And today we celebrate service and leadership. It's said that the final test of a leader is that the conviction he leaves in others to carry on. Today we celebrate a dear friend and our leader, our hero, Charles Platkin. Alexina says about Charles Platkin, I always find myself coming back to Charles for his insight and opinion. And every time I do, he always picks up the phone and makes time for me and my questions and ideas. He's truly one of a kind and I owe my career in food policy to that phone call and his mentorship. I and so many others in this room feel the same way. Today, as a collective, we celebrate Charles Platkin and the conviction he leaves in all of us. We go forward with Charles and because of Charles. Today, we celebrate a lifetime of service. Now, Charles, you know, it's funny. This is the first time I've ever seen him not in a black shirt. But Charles is a mentor who is willing to share his knowledge about anything and everything, anytime, to anyone who will listen. And most importantly, to those who don't. Until they do, he really makes sure they get it right. His knowledge is unparalleled. His desire to learn, to teach, has impacted the work at this center over the last eight years in food policy in New York City and beyond. Everyone is benefiting. I've personally witnessed him smack sense into those who need it most. <laughs> Charles is a visionary. There's nothing more exciting than seeing an idea of his percolate in his mind. His ideas are grand, groundbreaking and impactful. Give Charles an idea for an article and he'll turn it into an event, an initiative, a testimony, and eventually a policy that will impact millions of New Yorkers. I know personally, my South Bronx students and children everywhere live, learn, and eat better because of Charles. And we are forever grateful. Alexina says Charles is the most hardworking person I know. He keeps pushing himself to those around him to be the best they can be. It's no easy task, but when you have someone like him who's walking the walk and not just talking the talk, you are inspired to do the same. To our 40 under 40s, you are our New York City. So take his leadership, 
freak it, tweak it, work it, and reverse it. You are New York City. We are proud. Charles' impact on the center and food policy in general is immense. The newsletter, the events, the testimonies, the programming. His work has reached so many, and he will be missed enormously. Put a camera in his face, a pen in his hand, and Charles comes on quicker than a light bulb in a dark room. Today, we celebrate Charles Clacken and the conviction he leaves in all of us. Charles has never followed a path. Instead, he has left trails for all of us. And I'm honored to call him a friend, a mentor, and a colleague. Charles is one of the most courageous people I know. And the opposite of courage is not cowardice. It is conformity. Because even a dead fish can go with the flow. Because of Charles, we keep swimming. Charles is no dead fish. He is a sailor, a captain, a beacon of relentless honesty, and a commandeer on the seas of justice. He's taught us all that the degree to which we collectively resist any injustice is the degree to which we are all free. We all dream bigger and bolder because of Charles. Charles has taught us how to see, not what to see, to find our mark and make our mark, to take a stand, make a stand, and keep our stand. To never give up without ever raising a fist, Charles has taught us how all to fight the good fight. Charles's success has been doing what he loves for those who need it most. And tonight, may we all keep it and own it as our collective intention. Today, amidst the smoke, we gather and we celebrate Charles and we celebrate hope because hope doesn't abandon us, we abandon it. Today, we celebrate the hope Charles has brought and continues to bring to all of us. And you, the 40 under 40, are our new hope bringers and hope makers. Charles leaves in all of us the hope and conviction to keep carrying on. Together, we are the ones we are waiting for. Ours is a lifetime of service. Charles, I love you, man. And I want those glasses. And you, your legacy will not be what you leave for us, but what you leave in all of us. Getting him off the stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please join me in celebrating my friend, my hero, Charles Blackett. Oh, God. I like you. You know, I, 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 thank you. Here it is. I got a dream hat for you, too, but. <laughs> you, you, made, you. you made my family's day. Well, you can just send the check. I never, you know, I never like to follow, I follow you on every speech, and it, it's the worst. <laughs> Go get him, Cal. Really the worst. I, this is like the fifth time I've had to follow him and, you know, in, after, after a public speak, speaking. But anyway, thank you so much. And, you know, I, I don't know who he was talking about, but he was probably looking in the mirror when he wrote that speech. So, but I- It but was really, Alexina, and I do want to acknowledge her because she really, as a friend to all of us, Alexina was very much behind a bulk of the words here. I know, and she couldn't be here right. because she just had a, a beautiful little baby boy. And she, the smoke was a little too much for, the, for her to come down, so. From beautiful Vermont, you know, what can I tell you? Where do we need the picture? I see the photographer walking to Annette. Where do we need the picture? I'm sensitive. Okay, point, you know, I'm happily married. I follow directions. Tell me what to do. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I, I would I can't really talk for very long because he talked a lot, but that was really sweet and kind words. And and really, you know, it's funny because I never really reflect on anything like that. And I was cringing in my seat as he was talking. But it's really sweet to hear, you know, Stephen, who who is just does amazing work and, and everybody here does amazing work. And really, when we started this 40 under 40 event and the and the change maker award and the uh, food policy media award, it was really, you know. Alexine and I was sitting there. We wrote, it was an idea that I had that I stole from Tom Allen from City and State. If those of you know Tom, I know Rachel does and Kate does. We stole the idea, which Tom stole it from somebody else. So I had no problem with it. And I just thought, you know, we all work so hard for so little money and so little reward other than seeing other people get fed and, you know, get healthy and live a better life. And I really believe that, you know, the work that we do, I really believe that, that a lot of the work that we had done and do is thankless. And we don't do it for that reason. 
And I don't do it for that reason. I know all of you don't do it for that reason. I know that Rachel and Kate and Stephen and everybody here that, that, that works relentlessly long hours, you know, when I was in the private sector, I used to think, oh, an academic, you don't really work hard. It's fantastic. That's not the case. <laughs> okay. You just work much harder or as hard as anybody else, but don't get paid enough for it. Um, and, 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 you know, so that's why we started the 40 under 40 and the change maker award and, and the media award, because we really wanted to do something. And also we all work in our silos and it's so nice for everybody to see each other and see your face and, you know, and, and I see Michael in the back, he should be in the front and uh, all the work that he's done and relentlessly on the phone, he could be reached any time, day or night to help with anything. And I just, it's just all these special people that have inspired me in my life and, and showed me a, a path that I thought was just incredible and a, and a better way to live. Because if you don't give back to other people and you don't care about your community that you live in, you're really not living a great life. Well, thank you so much. And I'm really so happy that Annette is here. And Leah, thank you so much for everything. So before we go on to the 40 under 40 segment of the program, it's really important to express some gratitude to people and places that made this evening possible. I'd like to thank President Rob and, and our uh, faculty and staff at Silverman for joining us tonight. I know this is an extraordinarily busy time. The friends and family members, volunteers and community nutrition interns who greeted you at the entrance, assisted with food and beverage service, set up transplant and seedlings you'll see around this evening and more are people like Julie DeFay, Christine Donovan, Elias Garfinkel, Sonia Khan, Rima Katoon, Stephanie Mayle, Jonah River, and Anna Speck. Um, and our staff here at the center, none of this would have taken place without Leah, who has helped throughout the entire award season. I also want to thank Krishid for, for helping um, facilitate all, and Nzinga and Diane as well. Um, we have some of the most talented AV and facilities team here on campus with Zen and Saint and Michael and Ali, Lolita and Donnell and our entire public safety crew at the front entrance. Um, anyway, if any of you in the audience have thought about pursuing a degree in this arena, please consider um, this institution here because we have some really some of the best people to, here to learn from. So lastly, I want to give a huge thanks to some great businesses who contributed and donated to tonight's event, wonderful friends and collaborators in the space. So Liz Newmark, great performances, the great food that's out there. John Madker with Saratoga Water. Um, Janie Deegan of Janie's Life Changing Baked Goods. You'll get some cookies on the way out. Viraj Perry with Gotham Greens, J.W. Wiseman with Curious Elixir, Natural Food Deli across the street, and Bella Caracas of Etera Kitchen. She's also our neighbor, um, and she has a shared use kitchen facility that's open 24 seven, where she mentors about food, 50 food entrepreneurs. So on to the best part. One of our favorite events is honoring those in the 40 under 40 class, an annual celebration. Yes. of those outstanding individuals, a gathering since 2016 that is designed to acknowledge excellence. This year, we even received about double the nominees as there were spaces. So um, since this event had its inaugural cohort in 2016, we've seen rising stars representing all parts of the food world from production to consumption. Urban agriculture, policy and government, nutrition and food security, entrepreneurship, procurement and distribution, education, food equity and justice. And for the very first time, our, has, our city has representation from the federal, state and local level with an Office of Urban Agriculture. So we all know that health of food doesn't exist without good agriculture. So thank you, Mary Adams. So our group tonight is impressive. Some of these honorees have already used this opportunity to start collaborating and connecting with other members in the cohort to share best practices, maximize efficiencies, and increase collective impact. We're in awe of this cohort and the great work we're doing. New York City boasts some amazing talent and amazing heart. Um, Charles and Leah, please join me on stage as we hand out these awards. Now for the nominees. What do you want me to do? So. 
So Ken Baker. Congratulations. BX, yes. Charlotte Bosch. Hey, Charlotte. Really nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Susanna Camarina. Thank you. Mani Senek. Mark Shatterpoll. Welcome. Javon Cooper. <laughs> Sarah Deal. Naima Drotsky. <laughs> Carolina Espinosa. Iman Ferris. Ileana Garcia. Connor Garcia. Delilah Guzman. Stay Hall. Kendall Huff. <laughs> DJ Jebishin. Diana Johnson. Anup Joshi. Leah Kurtz. <laughs> Jade Lopez. Mm -hmm. 
Courtney Lum. Shana McCormick. <laughs> Teresa Morelli. Michaela Perry. Harna Ray. Ryan Renault, Paul Riley, great. Sherry Rose. Kasia Tavares. Julia Widman. Yeah, nice to see you too. Gabrielle Williams. And Dan Zotterer. <laughs> okay, well, let's give a final round of applause for our 40 under 40. Class of 2023. Great job. Oh, um, yeah. Um, also, a couple of 40 under 40 who were unable to attend today uh, Vanessa Ventola, Grace Paik, Mohammed Atia, um, Stephen Raga, Stephen Raga, Assemblymember Stephen Raga. I think that's it off the top of my head. <laughs> okay, so that everybody can get their beautiful. Oops, one sorry. more Gila Schwartz child. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yes, Gila for sure. Okay, so we want to um, invite everyone to go back out into the reception area, enjoy. We're going to have some beautiful cookies and including all the great performances, wonderful food. Um, so. Um, you have boxes that will take your, your statues home, safekeeping, all right? Um, Elias and Anna, our spec, are going to be at the back of the room um, and will give you the box to take everything home. So, um, and there's also a plant that you'll get that's from Gotham Green, some basil that's it's a little seedling. So thank you all for coming and thank everyone else who attended for your support. Thank you.